I'm in Idaho Falls, Idaho, outside of the Museum of Idaho. This is a really cool museum. Um, but one thing that's special about it, um, this is the museum in Idaho that gets the semi-special exhibitions that uh, go around and travel to different cities. And this one's got some pretty cool ones, and that's what I'm going to see today. They have a steampunk exhibit, and I've never really seen steampunk art before, and I'm really excited because it's so cool. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go check this out. A part of the museum is located in an original Carnegie Library. This train is an example of what we're going to see inside. There's an old bell. So if you're unfamiliar with steampunk art, um, it's kind of based off of uh, what the Victorians thought the future would be like. So of course they used a lot of steam technology. So uh, everything kind of looks kind of old fashioned, but uh, it looks new. And uh, a lot of this is modern. Art. There's a lot of steampunk artists even today that uh, make stuff like this and it's all based off like the designs of like uh, Jules Verne and H.G. Wells. Another feature of the art form is a lot of clocks and clockwork. It's also considered science fiction. The term steampunk uh, was coined by science fiction writer K.W. Jeter in the 1980s. While well, steampunk artists will make a lot of their own stuff, it's largely based off of uh, what was being invented and designed in the Victorian era. This is a Hue Machine by Bruce Rosenbaum. This is like a medical cabinet. This is actually super creepy. That's the stomach. Here's a photo of some guys in top hats. Very important aspect of steampunk. This is awesome. This is based off a design by English author H.G. Wells. It's like a helicopter design or something. That's so cool. So H.G. Wells was one of the most famous steampunk writers who was born to poverty, as you can see, and became the president of the Royal College of Science Association. In Wells' most famous book, War of the Worlds, he describes the Martians using like a laser beam, and uh, this was before knowledge or the invention of the laser beam. So really he prophesied this. It's now technology. Also Wells predicted the internet, talked about a world brain. Here's some non-steampunk stuff. This is all legit technology. That's a ray gun, that's so awesome. Here's a steampunk plane, a little alarm clock, and the War of the Worlds. Electric voltmeter, 1897. <laughs> Another famous steampunk thinker was Thomas Blanchard. Uh, when he was a little boy, he invented an apple paring machine. And uh, in 1825, he developed a steam-powered automobile and drove it around Springfield, Massachusetts. Um, so technically, it could be argued he invented the car. He also invented the reproduction lathe, which uh, mass-produced uh, rifle stocks. Um, it did help the Union a lot during the Civil War. There's a pressure gauge, a steam whistle, some blades. Here's some other common objects used in steampunk. Electric timer, the hot plate, pepper mill, apple pear, and the egg beater. Also that's an old adding machine, an old electric clothing ringer. There's also a fashion aspect of steampunk art. This is cool, they include some old Singer sewing machines. This one. Isaac Singer allowed for the mass production of sewing machines in the Victorian era. The 
This one's based off another steampunk inspiration, Jan Matziliger. He's born a slave in Dutch Guyana, which is now Suriname. But uh, when he was pretty young, he moved, he immigrated to the United States and invented a machine that would attach the upper part of a shoe to the sole and uh, became quite famous for that. This one's really cool. And this is why this one's based off him. It has shoes split in half. Here's some more machines. Carbon arc lamps. That was a portable battery. And this is a potentiometer. It's like an electrical dam. This machine's based off Mary Shelley. She was the daughter of early English feminist Mary Wollstonecraft. And uh, she wrote the story of Frankenstein. Now I'm in the medical section, that's a syringe. That's a sheet brain in a jar. Bone saw. Looks like this is an anatomical specimen of a baby pig split open. With the intestines preserved. Ugh. That's a Victorian blood letter. A dead frog in a jar. Victorian surgery sure looks fun. Yep. That's a prosthetic leg, an early prosthetic arm. There's a lizard in jar. That's a Victorian embalming machine. Wonder how that would work. Mary Shelley was also friends with Lord Byron and Percy Shelley. She also met Aaron Burr. And this is the guy who's probably the most famous steampunk writer, Jules Verne. You see, he was on a merchant ship uh, heading for the Caribbean, but he got pulled off. But he became very interested in the world because of that, and uh, he ended up writing 20,000 Leaves Under the Sea around the world in eight days. A bunch of other famous books that captured the minds of people in that era because of how like futuristic they were. It's like early science fiction. They're using a skull for this one is so cool. And there's a copy of the book right there. These are octopuses on the back. An underwater camera lighthousing, just like Captain Nemo used. This is a Fresnel lens. When it was invented, it like uh, advanced optical efficiency and it's uh, in a lot of lighthouses. This is a recreation of Lincoln Island from Burns' book, The Mysterious Island. Here's some nautical artifacts. In Burns' 1886 Masters of the Universe, he wrote about airships. Again, this was 1886. And uh, this is kind of what they're supposed to look like, these balloons over the city. I think this is supposed to be like Captain Nemo's uniform. Steampunk art, that's so cool. The last guy featured in this exhibit is George Eastman. He founded Eastman Kodak Company, which is the first company to uh, mass produce cameras. I think he found it in like 1900, 1901. That made cameras widely available and uh, really pushed us into the future. And this is Eastman's machine. It's 
the guy taking a picture with the giant Eastman Kodak camera. It's a 1903 Eastman Kodak. There's some Polaroids. And here's a lantern slide projector. The earliest form of this was actually invented in the 1600s. These are cool. These are like the old Barnum sideshow banners. Like a comic strip. Alright, let's get into some local Idaho history. I'm actually going to start off with some more modern history. Uh, this region uh, in Arco, Idaho is the birthplace of atomic power. Probably about 40 minutes from here in Arco, Idaho is EBR-1, which is the world's first nuclear power plant and reactor. That's what it looks like on the outside. It was opened in 1951. It first uh, started producing more uh, power than it used in 1953 and it was shut down in 1963. These are really cool. These are from EBR-1. And uh, these were the first light bulbs lighted by electricity produced by a reactor fueled by plutonium. And that's some graphite from the first nuclear reactor. They still have atomic energy labs out there near EVR-1. It's in a pretty desolate location in the high desert. When atoms are split, here's what happens. A single neutron starts a reaction in case you weren't aware, the these videos are still being shown in school is released as heat from the 50s. And powerful gamma rays They're actually pretty cool. That's a neat painting. There's a taxidermy moose head and deer. Look at this, this is a taxidermied gray wolf. Here's some fish. I I don't know if these are taxidermy or not. They look pretty fake to me. And some mallard, canvas back, and the northern pine tail. And this is a wax figure of a mountain man. They were the first white men in this area, in like the 1830s, 1840s. They did a lot of beaver and fur trapping. This is a trumpeter swan. They're really beautiful animals. Those are yellow-bellied marmots. And here's a golden eagle. This is really cool. This is the Andrew Henry Rock. Um, it's probably the earliest writing in English in Idaho. And uh, it was written by Major Andrew Henry, who was in the St. Louis Fur Company. And uh, they were challenging the British we a monopoly in the area. This is really cool. This is a new Colombian mammoth tusk, about 12,000 years old. More taxidermy, that's a badger. And that's a great horned owl. Look, this badger is fighting a rattlesnake. Wonder who'll win. I'm actually not sure. That'd be a cool battle to see. Here's some replicas of what uh, Lewis and Clark and the Corps of Discovery had. I remember a few years ago, I thought these were like real, that they actually used these. I was very disappointed when I found out they are replicas. So this is a Minch replica of the keelboat used on the Lewis and Clark expedition that they used on the Missouri River as long as they could. And here's a deer or elk. This is a bull boat. These were used by the Mandan tribes. Uh, and they would use it on the Missouri River. But uh, Lewis and Clark were really impressed how like smooth and stable these were in the waters so and they started using them. And this is the top of the food chain, the grizzly bear. Lewis and Clark came in contact with these um, 
but they killed them pretty easily with their guns, um, and they didn't understand why the natives were so scared of them. I guess it was because of the inferior weapons, but uh, this is uh, Meriwether Lewis said, quote, in the hands of skillful riflemen, they are by no means formidable or dangerous as they have been represented. Here's some Sioux artifacts. There's a headdress and a cradle. Here's a mat lodge. This is supposed to be based off a of Shoshone encampment. Here's a teepee. These would usually be made out of buffalo hides. Here's some more Shoshone and Arapaho artifacts. There's a headdress. Knife scabbard right there. And some arrowheads. Rocks. The entire population of this town takes this book literally. This flag was carried in the Civil War. This is actually the longest flag I've ever seen. And uh, it was used by the 1st Ohio Infantry. They have a little recreation of a one-room schoolhouse. And that's the teacher's desk. The town was called Eagle Rock for, I think, 12 years. 1879 to 1881. It also had all of these other names. The Metropolis of Idaho. And down here they have a Streets of Yesterday style exhibit on Old Town Eagle Rock, which was the name before Idaho Falls. And uh, after going to House on the Rock, this isn't that impressive anymore. There's luggage at the stagecoach station. Anderson Brothers. Dry goods and grocery store. They have a waffle iron and a toaster. So this is what a dry goods store used to be like. Fairly similar to today. This is the office of J. Ed Smith, attorney at law. You can see they have a replica of the Remington sculpture. This is Haynes and White Photography Studio. You can see that's the old setup. They'd usually have a painted background. Doubt it. And this is the reason why I'm glad I was born at this time. This is the old dentist's office. That had to be the most awful thing ever. They used to have a bowl right up next to you. I guess that's where they put your teeth when they were extracted. And there's some more instruments of terror. And this is the sheriff's office. Here's the carpentry shop. They even made the caskets for the town. This was the millinery. They have an old sewing machine in there. And this is the barber shop. This one's really well done. This is a blacksmith shop. Look at all the stuff they have in there. There's the anvil thing. Setups are so awesome. Love when museums have the old towns. This is by uh, the artist Henry Allen Nord. Because he was from this area. Here's another one of his paintings. His art's a lot like Thomas Hart Benton. Did a lot of agriculture based stuff in that art style. And here's a carriage. Old blouse and the plow. That old hat, gun, boots. Here's a shelf from I think the 1880s. A lot of Victorian trinkets on it, like little taxidermy animals. I really like these horn chairs. Usually see these in Texas. Made out of leather. 
another first. It's interesting. This all belonged to Dugout Dick of Salmon, Idaho. He lived in a dugout. He was kind of a legend out here. I think this table and the stove was used by Dugout Dick. Uh, he pretty much just squatted on Bureau of Land Management land illegally for over 60 years. But uh, the government just let him be. This is Dugout Dick's copy of the book Idaho Loners, Hermits, Solitaires, and Individualists. And uh, that's his part of the book. There's some Dugout Dick memorabilia that he collected. Well, this exhibit was awesome. I love steampunk so much now. Uh, the art in here is really cool, along with the history. It's just so interesting. And I also have other videos at museums and roadside attractions and all that good stuff. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching.